Good evening. As we gather in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Well, we're deaconless and musicless, so we'll try to make this work. As we gather this evening, let us praise God and thank Him for the many gifts that He has given us. Lord Jesus, you call us as sinners. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us as friends. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are with us on this journey of faith. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray together. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The gods your fathers served beyond the river are the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the services of other gods, for it was the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of the state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for He is our God. The Word of the Lord. The responsory song, Taste and See the Goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord has eyes for the just and ears for their cry. The Lord comforts the evil do confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just one, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. 
He watches over all his bones, not one of them shall be broken. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church, he himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as they love their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. All right, so we're going to choose a new God tonight. Here's your choices. God Jason. I want to choose him. <laughs> you can choose uh, the time God. You can choose the internet God. You can choose rain God or sun God. So let's vote for God Jason. Wow, there's a couple of you. You heretics, get out of here. <laughs> Ooh, let's wait for the lightning. You ready? Yeah, okay, good. See, this is what Joshua was telling the folks in the first reading today. He was saying, okay, household, we've got to either choose to follow God or just go about whatever you want to do. Because this choosing God ordains us to a certain way of life. It ordains us to a certain way to treat each other and a certain way to most importantly, love each other. 
So if we're going to stand here today and say, as Joshua said, as for me and my household, oh, he didn't say it. As for me and my household, we're going to serve God, right? Okay, so we got to do it. We done? Let's just go home, right? That's it, right? No. It's much harder than that. Because, you know, when you're traveling somewhere, you see those road signs that say so many miles to get somewhere. I was just in Maryland a couple weeks ago coming home from Pennsylvania, and there was this great sign that said, Bel Air, 50 miles, and uh, St. Louis, uh, 412, Denver, 1,700. And I thought, would that be depressing to have 1,700 miles to go to get to Denver? But each of us has some miles to go on this journey of faith. We don't necessarily have a road sign that tells us how long, so we may only have one mile left, or we may have a thousand miles left. But we've got to figure out if we're going to stay on this path and follow Jesus. The apostles had the same choice today. And notice something very carefully what Peter says. His whole faith changes today when he says, he doesn't say, where should we go? He says, who should we listen to? Notice the difference. Peter has figured out that there's nowhere to go, but there's only someone to listen to. And that person to listen to is, of course, God. Because God leads each of our lives in faint whispers and inclinations and us listening and saying, God, can you say that again? I missed it. Because we do miss it. We get busy, we get distracted, whatever in our lives. But now this today, because we said, as for me and my household, oh man, <laughs> We're going to serve the Lord. So now we've said it. Now we've got to do it. Let us pray together, my friends, our prayer of faith. I believe in one God. We know that God our Father listens to our prayers and so now we turn to God with the needs of our brothers and sisters and for our own needs. For the church that we may be a witness to our faith and values and continue to always build the kingdom of God, let us pray to the Lord. For peace around the world that just and lasting resolutions may be found to end conflict, let us pray to the Lord. For married couples, that their love for each other may be reflected to those around them, providing a sign of Christ's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those whose faith is weak, who are unsure whether to stay or leave, that God may strengthen them in their struggle. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord 
that those in positions of church leadership will prove themselves worthy of trust and will act in the best interests of those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. For therapists, counselors, and advocates who work with all survivors of abuse, that they will be filled with the Holy Spirit and wisdom to bring help. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who have suffered abuse by the church may find in Jesus the way to healing and life. Let us pray to the Lord. For tonight's Mass intention, we pray for Philip Nally, for Helena Mattingly, Mary Evelyn, and Aldrin Mattingly. Helena Nally. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Let me say it one more time. Philip Nally, Helena Nally, Mary Evelyn, and Aldrin Matt. There we go. Let us pray to the Lord. And now for our prayers we hold tonight in the quiet of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. God of all, look upon us with favor as you listen to our needs and the needs of the world. Grant us the grace to recognize your will as you respond to these prayers we bring before you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray now, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your needs O oh Lord, who gained for Yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in Your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, truly just, to give You glory, Father most holy, for You are the one living and true God existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are the countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. We too, confess, we too, we them too, we them with, <laughs> with them, we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in Christ, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and trusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when, through disobedience, he lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And so you love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us again. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits of those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which He Himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for Him to be glorified by you, Father Most Holy, 
having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand, and as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in the Holy Spirit, that they truly may become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially for your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who partake part in this offering, those gathered here before you, and your entire people who all seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into the heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we may glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our Mass is now ended, let us go in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God.